<laughs> Let the show begin! The 28th of October was marked by the release of the Winter's expansion for Resident Evil Village and the final reveal of the free multiplayer companion Reverse. All in one go, Capcom dropped a lot of content on Resident Evil fans. I'll be covering Reverse in a separate video, which will be linked at the end of this one. Aside from it technically being its own title, my comments on that aren't on the whole positive and I didn't want to muddy the waters when talking about the DLC. The Winter's expansion has some room to improve, of course, but on the whole it's a great bit of content that shouldn't be dragged down by the multiplayer. At the time of writing this, I've poured more time into the Shadows of Rose story and the main game's third person mode than the Mercenary's additional orders. That's more a reflection of my personal tastes than anything else though. I was never huge on the Mercenary's modes in any RE game. Despite that, as we'll get into, there was content there to grab my attention. The first thing I want to get into though is Shadows of Rose. This was easily the part of the DLC that I was most looking forward to and, on the whole, it both managed to meet my expectations and to surprise me. Without spoilers, the story delivers on what Capcom have promised in bringing the Winter's Saga to an end. It does so in a way that doesn't completely close the door on Rose as a character and leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Capcom's form in this area suggests they won't get answers, except maybe in files, which is a shame. However, they have managed to give a deeper insight into who Rose is as a person and the way the 16 years between the end of Village and the start of this story have shaped her. It does this most effectively through the story and the way Rose's past plays into the horror is pretty expertly done. It also in doing this gives a surprising but welcome epilogue to a character that you may not be expecting it to, creating an even more solid link between the entries in the Winter Saga of Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village. Speaking of the horror, the gameplay loop here feels more survival horror than action, rebalancing from what we got in the main game. The developers have managed to work Rose's powers into the gameplay in a way that enables progression without ever making you feel overpowered. The powers allow her to interact with the environment for progression, but can also be used in combat to initially freeze and later knock down enemies. However, she can only do this a set number of times and must find special herbs to replenish this ability. This plays well alongside the limited ammo and the ammo crafting system we know well already, to incentivize making decisions about when to run and when to fight. Rose's journey is not a power fantasy, and as in the classic Resident Evil entries, there's far more utility in running than in standing your ground. Two of the three boss fights in the game are also built explicitly around the use of these powers, the first of which requires you to stun in order to get the space to shoot at the classic Resident Evil glowing bad guy weak spots. The second I won't detail because it's a considerable story spoiler. What I will say is that it comes at the end of a section of intense horror which manages to outshine the House Beneviento section in the main game. I'll go no further as it's best experience fresh, but just to say that is easily one of the best and most horrible parts of the game. If Shadows of Rose was the only thing we got for this DLC, then it would still be worth it. This is easily on a par with Not a Hero and End of Zoe for Resident Evil 7. The other substantively new content as part of the DLC is the Mercenaries Additional Orders. As already mentioned, I've not played a lot of this, but even just playing as Chris and before you unlock Lady Dimitrescu and Heisenberg, it's a ton of fun. Running the levels feels less of a slog than it did with Ethan, with Chris's guns, punches and berserk mode all being overpowered enough to make this feel like the kind of run and gun action that the Mercenaries is meant to be. Add in being able to play as Lady D and Heisenberg with the chaotic gameplay that ensues, and really, the only downside here is that you don't get to play this mode in third person. As for the third person mode itself, it's a great addition and offers a lot of fun in seeing Ethan from a new perspective. It doesn't feel as smooth as native third person games like RE2 Remake do, and Ethan still holds himself like a first person character with weapons up in front of him for the player to see, but these are minor nitpicks. The only larger issue is that, whereas the developers have touted this mode as offering greater accessibility to the game, and it does that to a degree, there are still limitations. The obvious being that if somebody is only able to play Village because of this mode, for example due to motion sickness otherwise, then they still can't play the mercenaries. In the main game itself, the cutscenes are still in first person, and whilst that works from a story perspective, that transition can be hugely jarring, especially in sections where you have short bursts of third person gameplay in between a succession of first person cutscenes. Beyond that, the third person mode was of course something you had to pay for, whilst the other accessibility additions are free. It's good to have them, and the new features are certainly a star for Capcom. However, while it's great to be able to customise the subtitle size, colour and background, to have a closed captions option, and a permanent reticle option for motion sickness, there's still so much more that can be done. We should certainly welcome what modes Capcom have given us, but this has to be just the start. Audio description, directional arrows and closed captions for audio cues, and high contrast modes for colour blindness are a few additional features that spring to mind. But, as stated, hopefully what we've got represents Capcom starting to move in that direction. Despite the limitations in accessibility and some minor nitpicks, overall this is a fantastic DLC package for Resident Evil Village. 
I'm definitely going to get a lot of value out of this as I continue playing, and especially trying to get that S rank on all stages of the mercenaries for the Platinum Trophy. And if you're a Resident Evil fan, you will too. What's your verdict on the DLC? What's your favourite part? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that's just popped up, where you'll find out what I think of REverse. Check out the links in the description to join my Patreon for as little as £1 per month, or donate to my GoFundMe and get your name in the credits of my videos, like those rolling up now who I want to thank for supporting me and my content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.